Here we go. See if I can run. Apparently I can't. All right, there we go. So welcome to the advisor round table. Sorry you got, uh, we were in a little bit of an Adobe discussion there. Probably something a lot of people are interested in. Uh, we're gonna go from six to 650. And then I'm gonna jump into the student round table, which I'm sure um, scares the heck out of me more than this one. And uh, that, so we're gonna go for 50 minutes here. Thank you for coming. Uh, rules of the game, I don't think this is gonna be an issue for us as much. They're for students and advisors of FSBA member publications. Uh, you know, students stay out of this one, advisors for the most part stay out of the next one. Um, and, you know, most people are doing well with the first and last name is your display. And, you know, if we get crowded and you have something you want to say, use the chat or you can even raise your hand. Uh, but again, I don't think that will be a problem. And, you know, keep the language clean. We are recording and I will post this. Uh, unless Joe just goes off on a rant, then I'm going to post this to the, the website. Um, this is my basic schedule, and I'm not married to it. Just some of the things that I was brainstorming and talked to some of the, the board members about. Uh, you know, so some of the things that I'm going to try to keep us on task so we don't get mired down in one topic for the whole time. So there's a look at it, and I'll probably bring that back up and look at it to remind myself what we're supposed to be doing. Um, but certainly, I want to make this valuable to you. So if you have questions and things you want to talk about, uh, hopefully we will handle everybody's needs. So that being said, welcome. I'm Britt Taylor, FSPA president. And I know most of you. And thanks again for coming. Let me stop that. All right. So we kind of started with um, what is your county doing? And uh, we've talked a little bit about, uh, just a review for the tape, um, I know most people, most counties in the state have a mix of, you can choose, students could choose face-to-face -face, or they could choose the sit in front of your screen at the time the class is going, or they could transfer to virtual school, or some counties are even doing a hybrid, which is a mix of um, sitting in front of the screen during some times and coming to school for others. Uh, the trend a little bit has been for certain counties like Hillsborough uh, has just voted today for four weeks of virtual. Um, Orange County starting August 10th virtual and then whatever you've chosen you're starting uh, with that option I think on the 21st. Um, Broward I believe is is going virtual for the first nine weeks. What else, uh, are there any other departures from the norm out there in your districts? Or did that pretty much sum it up? So I if, think if you got the uh, students picked one of the, the student, students picked their options, so I'll see a thumbs up if basically the first thing I said is what your county's doing. Reading the room. Uh, kind of, all right. <laughs> so we'll transfer and, you know, if you want to practice your reaction thing there, you got your, your thumbs up and your reaction button. There you go. Thanks, Daniel. Um, yeah, we're all, we're all trying it out. I, I've gotten good at Zoom, so now I can go back to school where Seminole County won't let me use it, but that's a different story. So my next question is, what are you doing how are you going to handle, what are your big thoughts going into, I'm teaching some kids or maybe all kids virtually and I've got to run my publication and I've got to do this virtually, what am I gonna do? And don't everybody talk at once. I'll go first, but I don't really, I think it's, we all don't really know what we're doing. So it's kind of hard to say, but um, so Hillsborough just did four weeks of hundred percent online and then we're doing the e-learning in person and then switch to virtual. So I have some editors who are decided to do e-learning for medical issues 
But I think what we're doing now is just kind of focusing on making sure, like we use Basecamp, which has a lot of Slack. Like it's very similar in that feed situation. So I think right now it's just kind of focusing on something that they already know and kind of keeping the communication together. But newspaper, it's going to be a lot easier because with our with the snow site, it's already online. So yearbook is going to be a lot harder. But at least with newspaper, we're kind of keeping to that that is quote that we did during the fourth quarter. I would agree that the newspaper you know, being able to transition whatever we need online, we still do a print paper, and that's a question mark this year. Although the students probably don't see that as much as I do. But the, the online part for newspaper seems a little easier than the yearbook part. Um, you know, a student can write a story at home and get interviews at home and do all the things they need to put something online from home. Uh, the yearbook, you know, and how do I keep those students engaged from home and, and getting pictures and interviews and all that for yearbook seems like to me a big challenge. And I'm sure, you know, thinking about broadcast, it, Kind of seems to like in the yearbook category to me, it's got to be difficult to, you know, how are we going to get footage? How are we going to um, have like our normal, our normal setup? Can you can you hear me, Britt? Yeah, I can hear you, Omar. Um, obviously, I'm a broadcast school. Um, we're going to concentrate more on our monthly show than we are in our daily show. So the kids have time to go out, look for stories, get footage. Um, I'm having a waiver for my kids. Many of them know that if they decide to go out and get footage for a story, they're doing it at their own risk. It's not a recommended or uh, something that's mandated by CCNM. Um, and then we are going to try to do a daily show, but it's not gonna be live. It's gonna be live to tape where my anchors are going to film themselves off their phones at home and then send all their pieces to a producer and he's gonna put it all together. Uh, we're gonna try to release that every morning. Um, that's how we're pretty much handling our shows. Now for the class, yeah, a lot of things are gonna change. Um, I teach a lot of documentaries and styles like that and I'm converting to Netflix watch party I don't know if you guys know what that is, but a bunch of kids can watch together, type on the side. The teacher can pause and play the, the, the movie so you can control everybody watching it. And we can have discussions, but that requires kids to have Netflix. Not that I'm really worried because every kid could find a Netflix account if they needed to. Um, but that's pretty much where I'm at right now. Now, Omar, is your, um, what, what county are you and what's the status of, of uh, virtual learning for Miami Dade. Um, remember, I'm a private school, so we just decided to go remote today. Um, but Miami Dade County is on remote learning until at least October 5th. Okay. Because we don't know how to keep masks on. <laughs> Got it. All right. So, other uh, broadcast teachers, are you doing the, the same thing? Are you thinking, are you? changing plans as far as daily show, weekly show, things like that? Hi, um, I'm also in Miami-Dade County and I do broadcast. I was thinking of doing, um, for the spring we were virtual and we did video, um, a show that was 15 minutes long weekly. And I don't think I got much viewers out of it. So I'm thinking of converting this year to just doing small videos daily and having an anchor, you know, grab that video and intro it. I don't really know. I'm trying to get ideas from you guys to see what would be the best route to engage the kids and keep them active because I don't see my kids really leaving the house to go shoot anything, even with a waiver or anything like that. So I'm thinking of maybe just doing in-house interviews and just random how-to videos maybe. I don't know. And so are you, are you foreseeing like this kind of Zoom setup where they maybe interview somebody one-on-one -on -one in Zoom and that gets sent to, like what Omar said, gets sent to somebody to edit and produce it? Um, exactly. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. I have advanced levels. Like, I know they could just do it all together. I could maybe pair them up with like a talent and then an editor and just put it together. But then for my beginner courses, 
I don't know, I kind of like, I guess, the Netflix idea, but I don't know how engaging I can do that with, you know, our numbers. I'll go. Um, I have not done a daily show in the past, so I would like to um, try to dip my toe in the water with a weekly show at first to give us time to put it together. In addition to that, um, I, I'm also in Hillsborough, so we have the first four weeks going uh, full, full virtual. Um, I'm going to try to do one project a week single camera single person project which will uh, I will eventually include into the weekly show for example uh, I'm going to expect everybody to do a review whether it's a cereal a you know a microwave meal a um, a TV show a book a movie a, an album a, you know whatever something that you consume whether it's media or food or review it, you know, put your camera what up. What about the burger of the day? Say it again. What about the burger of the day? Sure, that's a brilliant idea, burger of the day. And then for the non-meat eaters, the, uh, the alternative. But yeah, I'm going to rely heavily on um, the YouTube style uh, review or um, how-to video. And then uh, I, I found this really cool kind of like a challenge um, where you take something that's very ordinary and mundane and you shoot it in a way that makes it look like a Michael Bay movie. And the example was um, this, this guy just did something we've all probably done a hundred times, which is throw a hot pocket in the microwave and then take it out. But when you shoot it in a way to make it epic, just these long tracking shots of the wrapper coming off of the hot pocket, it sliding into the microwave and kind of a slow motion spin, um, the, you know, capture the steam. It's just, a, you know, it's, it, it, it doesn't sound very sexy and interesting, but when you finally see the end result, it, encouraged, it encourages the students to, really think long and hard about every shot mapping it out and and i think if done properly it could really punctuate their b-roll skills for future projects and i mean for future things um going forward including news packages because i think that that, that students have this spray the scene type of mindset instead of meticulously looking at B-roll as a necessary tool. They look at it as wallpaper instead of actual ingredients. And I, I shot news for 20 years, so I know how important B-roll is. It can save your butt. And uh, I want them to start thinking in that mindset of treating B-roll as important as A-roll. So Joe, I was, that was, those are my goals. Go that was uh, one of my follow-ups and we'll get to the other publications in a minute, but I, I was intrigued by, how to how you know that would drastically change your teaching with these students kind of shooting at home and using phones and doing some things so that's um kind of going over the hot pocket lesson and then kind of exploring how to do the beat roll is going to be something you're teaching differently and more this year than, than usual is, is kind of what i'm hearing right and and i've made a commitment to myself over the last i, th I guess i just decided this uh two or three weeks ago when I was coming up with every possible project I could think of during e-learning, I'm never going to ask my students to do something unless I do the exact same thing first. So for my epic B-roll example, I'm doing one of those pizza kits where you get the dough and you get the perfectly measured sauce and you add your cheese and I, and I can just see myself i'm going to shoot it this weekend i'll share it with you if you want yeah slow mo of cheese raining down <laughs> and then uh i have this shot in mind where i'm going to take the pepperonis and throw them down on the pizza like you would a deck of cards like dealing cards it sounds stupid and it sounds hokey but if if it's done with the right lighting and the right slow motion technique it can really i think let them 
challenge themselves for, for B-roll. Uh, we, we just, we're very weak on B-roll and I want to make us as a team stronger when it comes to B-roll. That sounds awesome. I'm, I'm now regretting making this uh, round table during dinner time. Thanks, Joe, for making me really hungry. But uh, Devin, it sounds a little related to, uh, you know, the, what was the red sauce? The, the last time we all got together at a convention, we had the, uh, the nice sauce uh, film, film topic. Tomato sauce. Tomato sauce. Thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so let me ask this question to the, you know, that gets a little bit into like how the broadcast teachers and one idea or a couple ideas on how maybe training and, and getting that staff, you know, that day-to-day -day staff looks a little bit different. What yearbook or newspaper people, what are you doing? Uh, what are your, some of your thoughts for starting the year off and how, how you might train people a little differently this year? What's, what's going to work or what are you going to try? Any, any questions or thoughts? Hey, I'll start with that. I uh, was going to ask you guys, I'm Susan McNulty, Pasco County yearbook and newspaper advisor. And I met with my EICs for newspaper earlier today. And we were talking about making a um, shared Google form that we're going to give to every student and ask them to give us all the normal stuff that we do every year, like what are your hobbies, your interests, all that kind of stuff, but also maybe what are you doing during quarantine? But I, my question for you guys is, am I allowed to ask for their Twitter handles and all their social media contacts and permission to use their, um, their photos? We don't usually use anything provided. We usually try and take all our own, but this year is probably going to be different. I'm going to say that that a lot of people do that, especially if you, I think it's, you know, like recording if, if people know beforehand. Um, I, I think that that's, you know, something that that's definitely legal. You know, I'd have to read the fine print, but, I, you know, especially with things like the Wallsworth, you know, Snap app and yeah. crowdsourcing things that have happened. Um, you know, it's definitely a standard practice. If If it's not, 100% legal, I, you know, you and I need to talk because I, I might be in trouble. But we have, um, you know, just to piggyback on that, my editors put together a Google form as well and uh, are, are getting that out on the social media channels to ask people, you know, what are you doing? And, and right. give us some things that, that you want to see in the yearbook. It's a different year. We're not covering the normal stuff. What What kind of things basically give us some coverage ideas, send us a picture, give us, and they, they're asking for um, contact information too. Cause you know, and I think that's getting into the next topic, but one of the big questions is how do we interview? Um, how do we get these people where obviously, you know, getting them during lunch or going into class, other classes every day, I think is not going to work, you know? So this ability to get contact information is you know something that we need um so yeah i think we're gonna we're gonna be trying that a bunch of different ways uh what about um you know that that makes me think of some of the online etiquette some of the the ways to interview so how how we're sending our students out to get information are those things that uh you've thought about or have questions about or ideas things that that you've used in the past that may work in a virtual setup what are your ideas for training your students for some of this new, I'll say new age uh, interviewing? I'll grab that one. Um, I'm Kara Smith and uh, I'm at Middleton in Tampa. So hello fellow Hillsborough County people and our entire life has just changed because of the announcement today. So yay. Um, but I will feel that one because we were talking about that earlier. And um, one of the things that we did, um, we found like closer to deadlines our kids were sometimes just sitting in front of a computer with their phone in the hand, texting their friends or getting on their Instagram and direct messaging people from, from them going, Hey, I know you're on the volleyball team. What did you think about this year's season? And literally the person would literally just text back on, you know, Instagram or, or any of the social media, telegram, anything like that. And they'd be like, this is what I thought. And that quote is what ended up in the yearbook every single time, almost every single time. And I, I know that they've already talked about like, 
already making a list of people that they know and like they're already making lists like these are the people I'm going to contact and if I need to contact their friends they're already going I need to contact this person to contact this person and they're already creating their own network they're already setting that up because they we we were already probably going to have I would say half of my staff anyway going to do e-learning for this first semester so I was already trying to transition my kids to do that. So they were already jumping ahead going, hey, that really worked for us last year. Let's see how we can do that. Because for them, talking in person is very much the same as talking online. So like they're already set up to do that. So I just empowered them, gave them the opportunity to just, hey, run with it. As long as we're getting those solid quotes, you know, and essentially we have more paperwork to back that up because we have the actual text message we have the messages so it isn't like well i didn't say that to you you can say yeah actually i did i have it right here on my phone so essentially there's a little bit of protection on that as well which is kind of nice so i i i fully plan on using that again this year and i think that we and just to answer the instagram thing every time my kids were following other kids on instagram they're like hey we like that photo can we use it and we grabbed it and they said, yeah, absolutely. And we just credit them. Hey, this person's, you know, whatever. And it was, they, they loved it. Cause they're like, oh my gosh, I'm in the yearbook or I'm in the paper or whatever. So they wanted, it was, it was a way to get these more people involved and it actually allowed them to buy into our culture, which was really great. So. No, can I, I, can I add something to that. Yep. Um, hi, is, is it Carrie? I, I missed the first name. It's Karis, but whatever oh, sure. you can call I, me whatever uh, you like i don't care <laughs> um, i don't think we've met I'm, I'm at blake i do the tv but something she said I, I wanted to reiterate um getting a quote from somebody via text or via telephone is totally acceptable and and a and a very often used practice in the real world like i said i i was a news shooter for 20 years um uh i am going to take that concept and uh, as soon as Blake's journalism teacher actually comes on board after the hiring freeze is over, I'm going to try to get with her and approach each one of the class sponsors and have them give us the name and contact information of the class president, the class spokesperson, the class treasurer or whatever, so that if anybody, whether it's her newspaper class or my broadcast class, we need the answers from these 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 liaisons of each class. We can just contact them, and we don't have to find them in the hallway or figure out which classroom they're in or catch them at lunch. So this is a very common thing that I think I'm going to have my kids do more of, and I'm going to have in in the in the in the resources of contacts, the principal, the assistant principal, the facilities manager, the head janitor. The uh, you know the and and then each the senior spokesperson the senior president so on so on so on so that they can be easily if we need a quote from somebody boom let's just call them let's just Twitter them you know what I mean one thing that that I'm excited about kind of a little bit like what you were talking about Joe with getting back to some of the things that you always want to teach but you you hit the ground running and you you kind of gloss over them is this this skill of interviewing and i i really one thing now i've been in enough zoom meetings now i'm getting you know about done but they're not going anywhere but one thing i really liked about this is you you really have the chance to kind of break down some conversations and to really do some things that maybe you didn't have time or, or weren't thinking about before so you know i want to backtrack for a second and say that the one thing i've heard in, in a lot of you know, kind of experts talking is, is kind of starting these with, hey, is it okay if I record you? And having that, even getting that on tape or having, you know, say your name and say, you know, that, and I'm going to ask you that again when the recording starts, however you want to set that up, but making that a part of the recording uh, is, is something that can protect you. But I do think that, you know, the skill of interviewing and using a lot of these recorded conversations to get more into a conversation and more into an interview is going to be something that's valuable for the for our kids uh something that before was oh, i'm going to go run between classes and do a 30 second interview why didn't i get any good quotes you know so hopefully that can be something we can slow down and you know smell the roses a little bit and I think for that, hi, I'm Emily Faber. I teach at a private school in um, Palm Beach County. Um, and uh, 
I think along those lines, a lot of the, the kit, I we do the, the print publication um, and we've we've really, I think we're gonna have to slow it down a lot this, this year and maybe aim for one news magazine at the end of the semester um, and then focus more of our daily content on Instagram. Um, I think just because of all the different factors, just slowing down what we produce is gonna have to be the reality. But a lot of the kids in my class are new totally to journalism and so um, I totally agree, right? Texting there and, and um, direct messaging and when we're down to the wire, getting quotes that way, but I don't want, you know, I, my responsibility is to teach them how to interview. So I'm thinking probably FaceTime, right? They're very familiar with FaceTime. Um, so that will probably be something, uh, scheduling a call. They don't really talk on the phone. So that's gonna be, you know, that's gonna be really awkward for them. I know there's an app that just popped up for me called Tape a Call. And I guess you can, you know, you type in the number and then it records the conversation. I don't know about the legalities of that, so I'm gonna run that by my school first. But I'm just thinking, I, I do wanna engage them in longer conversations because only doing one publication, most of our, our it will be human interest and features rather than news. And that requires some in-depth conversations with people. So I don't know if anyone else has recommendations. I know, I, I, I think they're comfortable with, you know, with FaceTime, but um, I'm not sure what else. One thing that came up in our uh, meeting with in our session with Wayne was using Otter. Um, so I think it's otter.ai if I got that right. But it's an app and it's uh, free. Uh, you really have to work it to go over the, the free minutes, but for recording and it will um, spit it out into text, you know, and so it's, it's a translating or, or you know, basically it will convert an interview to text and it, you know, it's not always pretty or perfect, but it certainly, you know, beats typing up a whole interview and, you know, can use, do some of those skills that, you, that you're looking for. So Otter is something that, you know, it's an app, it's on the phone, you can use it a couple different ways. So something that I've used, I know my students have used and it's come up a few times. Great. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm. Tell me about, uh, there's, a, there's another, translating uh, hack that I want to make you guys aware of. If you have uh, a computer with a decent microphone, and most, most of us do, if you open up a Word document in Microsoft Word and then hit the dictate button and then put your speakerphone on the keyboard and- there, uh, There's an app called Google Voice that if you- Go ahead. All right, he froze. Um, but using a speakerphone near the dictate function of Microsoft Word has been ridiculously successful and surprisingly reliable for me. Go ahead, uh, Omar. You froze for a second. Yeah, my internet's pretty crappy. Sorry. Um, I, we use a, an app called Google Voice. Where you create your own phone number. And uh, if you tell the person, if you press four on your dial, it tells the person this, this phone call is being recorded. And then you can tell them, Hey, listen, and then you can go to your Google voice.google.com and download the recording afterwards. Huh? Did, you, did you say you create your own phone number that way? Yeah, you can create your own phone number. So could you, could you technically, could you technically do alternate. like a, a phone number for the class and then that way kids aren't calling from their personal phone. So it's just like, this is our publication's phone number. Yep. Cool. That's a great, great tip. Yeah, uh, Omar, that's a great tip. We talked a little about it, interviewing. Give me some of your uh, photo, um, video, your footage solutions. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of, you know, phone work or just this kind of interviewing face to face. But and Omar talked a little bit about, you know, having a waiver uh, for students to go out and shoot stuff. But things are still going to happen. Not quite at the same speed they they did before, but what are you what are you thinking about for photos for uh, for video? Well, um, we got. Go ahead, Joe. I, I was just going to say the biggest challenge is I'm going to if everybody can watch me for a second. Uh, instead of looking at a computer like like this, I'm going to try to encourage them to when they conduct calls, move the camera at eye level so we don't see up everybody's noses because I don't want us to have, as a result of the 
what will likely be a year long process. I don't want us to lose the concept of composition and framing. So even if it means finding uh, 10 cookbooks from your mom's pantry, put the computer higher so that it's eye level. And that is a challenge because it's gonna require extra work and lifting heavy things. And those are two things that teenagers refuse to do. So it, that's gonna be a major hurdle for me because I, I, I'm, I'm a, a, you know, it's probably not appropriate to say, but I'm a little bit of a composition Nazi. So I don't want us to, 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 to slack in that area. Good point. I know. I, I think what we were doing at the end of last year, especially during FSP and the virtual convention, I think there's a bunch of ideas there. Like, you know, for yearbook and, and newspaper, and, and I'm speaking completely out of turn because I'm not one of these people, but hey, well, you know, the, like the best pet. I mean, I know Joe loves that, that contest, but <laughs> maybe there maybe there's something there. There's a story, you know, like um, my kids did stories on Netflix party last year. They did stories at in-home gyms and how people are staying fit. They did stories on how doctor's visits have changed through virtual phone calls. There's a bunch of stories that kids can do inside their houses without going out that aren't interesting and are very relevant right now too. So it's just, it's just I, I feel, especially journalism teachers, and, and I'm sorry for grouping us all in one thing, but sometimes we're in this box and we're just like, this is the way it works, you know? And, the best thing that I think could have happened was us being forced out of that box and thinking, all right, well, what are we going to do now? And just try something different because there's stories out there to tell, even in, in your own block, in your own house. One yeah. of the things that I've found is for my staff, and we've talked about this a lot, is just, a, you know, the, the worry of putting people, you want to keep people safe. Um, you still want people to go shoot who want to shoot. Um, you know, I have people who want to take pictures. And so we're creating some documents that, you know, just reiterating the, the six foot distancing, wearing a mask all the time and trying to have more communication when we're coming out to shoot something. But I'm going to have those kids who still want to go out and take pictures. And I imagine it'll be the same for some programs with kids who want to shoot footage uh, for broadcast. And, you know, I think that'll be a big there's going to be the people who will and who are comfortable and can do it safely and the people who don't want to. And I've, I've made peace with that. I think it's just a question of how am I going to, you know, if I have a yearbook photographer and they're not really able to go out and take pictures, then I've got to kind of scramble and come up with maybe you're my, your photo editor, you know, your edit, not editor, but editing photos. Maybe you're the one who's the social media stalker. Um, finding pictures uh, and kind of curating them from the community. So really, it's going to be a case by case basis, I think, for us, those people who, who are feel comfortable with shooting and going out and doing it, you know, making that happen. Uh, but still, you know, I think that the challenge for us might be we don't want to have the three people who have cars and the ability to go out kind of abusing those people so that they're shooting all the time out everywhere. I wouldn't feel good about that either. So it's going to be a balancing act, but I, I think we're going to, you know, we're going to have a mixed bag. As, but I know I'm going to have some people who are who are happy uh, to go shoot, and we're going to make that try to make that work. Yeah, this is Joni. I also think that we assume that um, the students knew how to know how to use their iPhones, but I think we need to kind of rethink those things because I had a lot of students who would shoot and get the high efficiency HEIC and then we'd have to convert their images but I think we're gonna have to rely more on iPhones if they want to shoot and you know iPhones shoot in 4k now 60 FPS for broadcast so if it's between that and a camera they might have that option because you know, even like they, today, Hillsboro decided to do four weeks 100% online. I was leaving the school and we're right across the street from the Boys and Girls Club. And there were like 20 boys playing pickup basketball, literally across the street. So, you know, I think, I don't think it's, they have the, their safety in mind, but I do agree with you guys that I think some people will want to shoot and will want to do those things. So it's kind of maybe if we, 
if you don't think they know about their phone, kind of finding those tips and tools that they could at least change their settings to have the maximum file sizes so that you could be able to print those in the book, the newspaper, or if they want to shoot video on their phone, switching to the 4K 60 FPS so that they can kind of still get those projects done. You know, I wonder, here's a question, because uh, this is on my list. Uh, I want to not only make kind of a how-to guide for students using their phones, but I almost think it could be useful for, you know, parents or, or students. Let's say you have that um, student who has this great activity at home, but they don't really feel comfortable with somebody coming over, and maybe you don't want somebody going over there, but maybe mom would take a picture or take some footage. You know, is that something where you could create some guidelines and have that be a document that not only your staff uses, but maybe that document you send it out to your community as well. Say, hey, we're counting on you this year for some pictures, for some footage. Here are some tips and maybe a link to some examples. Uh, so if you do want to see your stuff used, this this will give you a better shot. Is that something that that you guys are are considering? Or so uh, on that on that topic, I was speaking to another teacher in another professional group. And um, he said that he is going to have a parents only meeting on Zoom during the first week of school to explain just that. He's going to condense the concept in their textbook of composition and framing down to a one hour Zoom lesson just for the moms and dads so that if their son or daughter asks them to shoot something for them, they will have at least the understanding, the basic understanding to get it, you know, to get it right. And, and I thought that was a brilliant idea. And I, I don't know if I'm ready to take that on to, to have 50, 50 parents show up and, and have me talk to them like they're four, but I thought it was a brilliant idea. And, and if I can, if I can do it in a way that won't annoy them, I'll, I'll try. But somebody else in this Zoom meeting may have more patience than I do and, and may want to uh, entertain that idea. And, and I'll just say, you know, you know, show in for the site here that if as people create those resources, please share. And, you know, that's the kind of stuff I'd love to link on our resources page. So maybe other people could use uh, to, to modify and, and give to their parents, their students, uh, you know, because we're all breaking some new ground here. I will say something that worked for us is um, we basically kind of left it open for whoever, whether it was pictures or whatever. If anybody wanted to contribute, we were open because, again, allowing more people to participate in a lot of ways, especially because we didn't have that large of a yearbook staff. To be totally fair, we had 17 in total, which may sound like a lot for some of you guys. It may sound like, oh my gosh, how do you actually put out a book? So, um, and I had a whole bunch of kids who were fairly new to it. So we actually accept a whole bunch of um, photography and, and, and all sorts of things that we were able to um, use. And we pulled from the digital art kids. We pulled from, they gave us all sorts of art, artistic stuff and photographs that they had taken all around the school. Um, we had parents send us like crowd shots from games. So, because I mean, we were, we were small, so we couldn't cover everything that happened. So we absolutely, you know, opened whatever you'd like to send us. So I created a Gmail just for our journalism and I basically passed it out. Whoever wants to send it, then they sent it. And because you can only send so much on the attachment, it was actually really good. They could literally send it directly from their phone, upload it, and it was great. And a lot of their pictures that we needed for filler, especially for, you know, collages and things like that were really, um, where it doesn't matter, you know, on quality at the end of the day, you know, sometimes when, when you want the really big focus ones, those are the ones you re really want, either your professional shots or your really good photographers. Sometimes with the collages, you can get away with some of the parent shots, you know, um, and it worked really well for us. It was kind of some filler when we had some photography issues, to be totally fair. And I, I think it's a good backup system. I wouldn't use it as your primary source, you know, obviously, because we want our kids to be doing most of the work and we want to teach them how to cover that. But especially right now, I think, I think it's a really good B-roll in a lot of ways. It's a really good way to like pick up some, some extra um, things that can kind of cover you especially right now when you you can't get everything and you may have to fill pages you may have to do things so just throwing that out there but it worked well for us so that's a great idea you know i'm going to jump quickly to the 
I think it won't take too long to cover. We've covered it some already, but um, what about sports? What about extracurriculars? Those things that make up uh, a large portion of our publications. We've, we've talked about doing a lot more, you know, people pieces and, you know, at home life kind of pieces and some of the things that are going on. Um, any other thoughts with regard to missing those, those clubs, those organizations, those sports? A lot of a lot of student activities are doing virtual events. So, like we had a virtual prom last year. We had a, a well, we did an in-person graduation, but we had a virtual graduation. Um, we're having virtual freshman orientation. Um, they're doing a lot of stuff through Instagram. Um, so, I mean, that's the best I, I can think of right now. Yeah, Heather, were you going to say something? Um, yeah, I met with, we had a um, WebEx with the club sponsors the other day, and they are basically trying to let the kids still have clubs and, and have meetings, but they're focusing again on having them virtually. Um, campus or social distancing. Um, and then today I met with our new athletic director, and she's just beyond frustrated because nothing's getting scheduled until she have teams together until the end of August. So she's thinking the beginning or middle of September before we even know who's on what team. So everything's just really sketchy. She was hoping that um, they would county scrimmages and get those scheduled and then um, maybe eventually play other teams and all but she's they're, they're still looking for coaches it's just a mess yeah so meet with her and schedule some um team picture days and instead of doing the pictures just in really large groups i'm going to split them up into squads and just do a team let's just put the offenses well offensive line in a picture you know, and break it down so we'll have more pictures, but of the same teams. And hey, we'll probably, so it's probably going to be okay. Um, so I just, uh, uh, um, powers it, see what happens. But at least I had a productive meeting with her, and that was good. So everybody of, you know, responsibility like none of us have been able to really do anything yet because we're kind of at the bottom and we're just waiting for them to solve their their problems so we can then solve ours so it's been hard to be patient but to keep the kids patient because they don't know what to do either really so yeah all right well thank you yeah there's a role in seminole county by the way corey have you corey yeah, um, you say something I'm in the car, so I don't know if you, you could hear me well. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, we don't know yet in our middle school, the sports schedule. Um, I'm in Dade County in an, in the, in the, in an independent school. Um, but one thing I'm going to pitch to my students is we have a lot of athletes. And if we don't have teams per se this year because of, um, you know, circumstances, perhaps we could do profiles on certain, you know, students, um, the eighth grade, you know, athlete, um, maybe they're, they're doing sports on their own or um, how they're training for their sport. So, you know, try, try, trying to see other things that we could cover within the sports. And same as organizations, kids have done other um, active, uh, other um, volunteering services and, you know, try, you know, ask around and see, you know, what we could what information we get from the students and maybe do more profiles that's an excellent idea all right as we're coming close to the end here are there are other things other questions you have for the group or things you want to share uh, i had this idea that i unfortunately can't do right now because of our four weeks of uh at home but i wanted to find two or i should say i want my students to find two first time voters and we would do this multiple times and cut all the interviews together but sit them socially distance at a bench in our courtyard and just 
have them talk, give them a 10 minute time limit. Don't feed them anything. Don't push them in a certain direction. Just let an organic conversation take place about what they're passionate about, what, what they think about this election, why, you know, what they'll be remembering because this is the first time they're pulling the lever, how they're voting in person or absentee, and just see what first time voters, like what, what, what is going through their mind you know, if they want to discuss who they're going to vote for and why, that's great, but they don't have to. But I think that could be a unique montage of sound bites, you know, um, and, and you, you, you know, I, I just, I don't know what would come out of it, but I think something unique could possibly come out of it if you were to get five sets of two people having an organic, non-prompted conversation about something that is so epically important right now. Which you could still do via Zoom. Like you could still set up like a Zoom meeting like this with people. Yeah, you're 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 absolutely right. But in my mind, oh, I, I had this you, idea. you had the setting. Yeah, I, I know I know the exact bench they would sit on. I would you shoot get, it. Your your director. I would at shoot heart. it yeah. like yeah. this. Yeah. I'd have it framed up. They'd have masks on. I I got the mics ready in my mind. I've already blocked it out. Now I can't do it. <laughs> well. Uh, to, to kind of wrap it up, I, I appreciate everybody coming on. It's been a quick, sorry, Patrick, you're just coming in at the end, but um, I do appreciate everybody coming out. I think one thing that, that we've heard tonight and we're hearing a lot is that the, you know, it's a year to, to try some new things. If you've ever been scared to like break the, break the routine, this is the year to do it, you know, try something new. There's definitely going to be an emphasis across all publications on like deeper interviews uh, more profiles, kind of digging in a little bit deeper than maybe we have uh, traditionally. And I, and I think that that's going to be something we're going to see across the board. And so it's, um, you know, definitely people people are hungry for, for our content. We saw that with yearbook sales. We've seen that with, you know, people watching videos. And we've just seen that a lot. So I, it's scary, but it's also exciting that I think we're going to have some opportunity to do some interesting things and kind of break the mold this year. So Thank you for organizing this. Yes, uh, thank you, Britt. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. I appreciate you coming out tonight. And uh, you know, we'll see you next Thursday. Um, Joni, you have next Thursday, right? Oh, we lost Joni. So uh, Joni is Joni's bringing a, a an interesting guest next Thursday. It'll be on the web. A little tease for it. So uh, hopefully, we'll see you see you next week. Thanks, guys. Bye bye. Bye.